G'day. In this video, we're going to be converting this barbecue from gas to wood by converting into a rocket stove or a rocket barbecue. But because it's got the hood, it's also going to double as a rocket oven. Well, welcome to my everything else channel. This is the place where I put all my videos that don't fit on my other YouTube channels. This is very rough and ready, like lots of places where the metal doesn't meet properly. But by doing it this way, you don't need to be a good metal worker. You've just got to get things approximately. So the first thing is we've got to sort of take the things apart and make some decisions on how we're going to make the conversion. Hmm. For the tubes, we're going to use this old flue from a slow combustion heater. Uh, now I got this from a mate of mine. Uh, he is, um, he's got a company called Turbo Heat and they make a heat exchanging system for the flues of wood combustion stoves. And that allows the heat to be captured that would normally go up the chimney and then redistributed throughout the house. So you get a lot more warmth in your house for a lot less wood. Now he's not sponsoring this video. Well, he actually kind of is sponsoring this video because he gave me the flu. But you know, when they're installing their systems, they rip these out and then they toss them away. So I just said, I, you know, can I have one? And he said, sure. Um, so we've got to cut this to length. We've got to fit it into the cabinet at the bottom. Um, and then go from there. The easiest way to, to do the cuts to fit the tube would be a hole saw. But unfortunately, I don't. <laughs> this is my biggest one, uh, and it's, it's, it's considerably smaller than it needs to be. So, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a hole with the hole saw. And then with an uh, angle grinder, cut off disc, I'm then going to um, cut some slashes in the hole and then bend them in. Um, that should work. I started using hole saws about... <laughs> Shut up! I first started using hole saws about 15 years ago when I was working for an electrician as his, his labourer for about six months. And then when I was researching, designing and building aquaponic systems, I was using them all the time, especially the big ones. But they still catch me, so I thought I'd give um, some pointers on how to use them safely. But I spun those, that, those suggestions off into a video which you can find a link to in the description and uh, in the icon on, in the top of the screen on the card. Nice, well that worked. The thought that just occurred to me though is that before I drilled those holes, I should have drawn how big I want the hole to be with a compass. Um, now, of course, the middle's gone, and um, that's going to be a bit trickier. I'll just try and scratch a hole. Um. Angle grinder. I can use a pair of pliers for this job, or whatever to bend them up. I like using a spanner, an adjustable spanner though, it just works better. Oh, that's brilliant. Excellent. Always, always good when something works. <laughs> of course, now that I point them down, they won't let <laughs> <laughs> it won't let it out. It can be annoying when it comes to fitting it. Oh. oh. Damn. Oh. 
Yeah, okay, that was harder. <laughs> now, if you're putting a pipe through a wall or a piece of sheet or something perpendicular to it, 90 degrees to it, then you want to cut a perfect circle at an angle, then the hole you actually need is ends up being oval. I'm going to start by cutting the sides of the hole so that when I bend the bits in, it's the same width as the flue. But then I'm going to have to sort of adjust the uh, the top and the bottom and the sort of the curve to suit the angle at which I'm going to be inserting the um, the the flue the the feed pipe. I should mention, I've built chimneys, I've built flues, I've built furnaces, um, I've built passive solar uh, um, uh, draft cooling systems that all operate on exactly these same principles. But I've never actually built a rocket stove per se. So. I'm kind of working this out as I go. That looks like a good height. So there's my measure. But I don't want the tube finishing here. I want it to actually, I want the, the, um, the combustion chamber tube to be about there, about that far off the ground, because um, that will leave room for insulation which we're going to fill this box with. Now this is actually a little bit of a tricky bit because we want the two uh, tube pieces of the flue and the, the primary combustion chamber to come together at basically a right angle, which means I've got to do a 45 degree chamfer on the two bits of tube. Um, now if I had a, um, a metal cutting drop saw, that would be a piece of cake, but I don't. <laughs> So the next thing I want to do is I want to trim the feeding tube to size to make it um, as, short or as, as short as possible. Now, the other areas we were working on weren't, aren't really going to be exposed to people's fingers. But this is the feeding tube where we're feeding the fuel in. And people's hands will be going near this. Okay, now that looks very... Um, rough. Uh, yeah, like I was saying, it is rough, but uh, we've got to fix that. That last little bit in there is hard to get to because of the, well, the shape of it, really. Um, what have I got? What have I got? What have I got? So that's basically all the metal work done. Uh, it's not neat, it's not pretty, but for what we're doing, it doesn't need to be. These joins don't look pretty, and you know, they're not. They're damn ugly. I'm much better as a woodworker than I am as a metal worker. Well, that's the metal fabrication all done. Uh, very, very simple. Uh, if you've got even basic skills with an angle grinder or a jigsaw or whatever, uh, you could do this. Because the next step solves any, prob any problems you've got with the metal work. And the next step is to pack that space with, well, either insulation or thermal mass. Now, for this, it's a, um, it, I want something that's going to heat up really quickly, so I'm just going to pack it with insulation. Simplest, you could go to and buy some perlite, or you could buy some vermiculite, a little bit of cement there, pack it in, and you're done. But I'm going to be doing, using something that's much more natural, and incidentally much cheaper. But that'll be in the next video, and in that video, we're going to see the rockets go fired up. So, uh, hope you've hope you've seen how simple this is. Uh, but if you've got any questions or anything, ask away, and stay tuned for that next video where we get things finished.